There is ample evidence of collusion. Well, I think there is direct evidence in the emails uh, from the Russians uh, through their intermediary offering dirt on Hillary Clinton as part of what is described in writing as the Russian government effort to help elect Donald Trump. What do you got hard? Well, Chris, yeah, Chris unfortunately, I can't go into the evidence that's uh, being do presented to the committee. you have something hard and, that you can't reveal? Uh, you know, I can't uh, reveal that, Chris. We have- uh, he's got things that he can't reveal, and therefore he can't reveal that because, you know, the big lie must live on. And Adam Schiffless is just the guy for the job. The biggest liar in Washington. Man, oh, Manischewitz. He was censured yesterday. The Democrats cheered him on because they love lying. They love the big lie. You know, like Gurgle. They got uh, their guy like the Reverend Al Charlatan would say. The Gurgle thing. Keep in mind the Socialist Workers Party of Adolf Hitler and their chief propagandist, Joseph Goebbels, Joseph Goebbels, uh, who uh, famously said, and it's the Democrat Party's formula now, uh, a lie told once remains a lie. A lie told a thousand times becomes the truth. That's the Democrat Party's mantra. That's their bumper sticker. It's uh, words to live by uh, from the Democrat Party. Remarkable stuff. Also, I noticed on our uh, Newsmax show, I mentioned uh, Gurgle last night on the, on the Newsmax program at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. And, and um, I, uh, speaking to the lefty lib on the uh, panel, Jason Nichols, who was uh, perpetuating the big lie, I threw uh, uh, Goebbels in there. And the left-wing website, Mediaite, actually attacked me as though anything I said uh, were uh, untrue, when, of course, it wasn't. Everything I said was perfectly and 100% true, and I stand by it, but uh, never mind all that. Did I hear you correctly say that perhaps he was influenced by Gurgle? Could have been Gurgle. Might have been a Gurgle thing going on there. The Reverend Al, he's an award-winning journalist at NBC News, he is, and Tawana Brawley watches every night. Do you think Tawana Brawley watches every night? It's, uh, it's hard to say. Um, well, it's another day, another bucket full of crazy, thanks to the Democrat Party, Perhaps you've heard of them. And uh, on Capitol Hill yesterday, we were live on the air while John Durham was testifying. And we have uh, it continued, uh, although the hearing was scheduled to last three hours, it lasted six hours, which for Democrats trying to follow along, that's twice as long as three hours, twice as long as it was uh, expected to last. And uh, so a lot of good stuff. And I'm going to share some of the John Durham and the dim-witted corrupt Democrats boy Corruption really is their bag baby, isn't it? And then we had the uh, censure, the vote on the censure of uh, Adam Schiff for being the biggest liar in Washington, which is uh, pretty amazing. That's uh, You should get a gold medal or something like that, stolen from somebody else, of course. But uh, that, was, that was a moment. And all the Democrats uh, chanted, they chanted like a bunch of mental cases from the Middle Ages, uh, they're chanting, shame, shame, shame. They love that chant. They don't know what the word means. They're completely without shame. They're, they are the pointy end of the spear on the shamelessness of our, of our society. And they chanted, shame, shame, shame. And they weren't wagging their finger at Adam Schiff for being the biggest liar. Uh, and and at, what is it? Only 26 people have been censured in the history of the House of Representatives, I think. And Adam Schiffless richly deserves the honor. He said he wears it as a badge of honor. Really? Yeah. He said he'd, he'd love the penitentiary, which is uh, more or less where he belongs. But, but it's a badge of honor, he said, uh, to be censured by his, the, the august body uh, in which he serves, the House of Representatives. And uh, the lefties, they chanted, shame, 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 that the vote was held at all. Just because he lied every hour of every day for years, undermining the president of the United States, and should be kicked out of Congress. But instead, the Democrats are planning on hitting Senator Dianne Feinstein in the back of the head with a shovel and having Adam Schiffless uh, run for her seat and perhaps take her seat in the United States Senate. That's how corrupt they are. They're fantastically corrupt. Just extraordinary stuff. So we got that going. And then after chanting shame, 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 um, because they are shame. They define shame. They are shame itself. They are the the breathing embodiment of shame. And uh, then they gathered around Schiff. They almost carried him around like it was, uh, you know, Jewish wedding, and uh, they're going to do the hoopah 
Uh, they practically carried him around the House of Representatives. And they had that Rosa DeLauro woman with her electric, magnetic, purple hair. She's like 80, and she's got the, uh, that is 80 years old, and she got the magnetic purple hair. It looks like it's battery-operated, and, uh, and uh, 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 Nanny Pelosi was in there. She was in there, and they're celebrating the biggest liar in Washington who was just censured by the House of Representatives. It's a historic moment, and it uh, brings great shame um, on Adam Schiff and the Democrats, but the Democrats see it differently. It's uh, you're right, the the horror. Sorry, the horror, not the hoopah. Uh, thank you very much, <laughs> and uh, Jane correcting me on my. Uh, so that's uh, that's good. Thank you, and uh, and and then I got to tell you. Oh, also I've got updates for you on the uh, the mini sub that went down to uh, go look at the Titanic, and things didn't go very well. They changed the timeline on uh, when the uh, mini-sub was scheduled to run out of uh, oxygen. They had been saying for the last couple of days that it would be noon today, noon Thursday, Eastern time, that they would run out of oxygen. Then last night they said, no, 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 we did the math again. This is a problem sometimes when you don't do the math right. They did the math again, and they said it's very scientific. They said they'll run out of oxygen at 7.08 a.m. Eastern time today, which is some time ago now couple of hours ago and but it was very precise 708 makes it sound more convincing than just saying seven o'clock because seven o'clock well it's seven o'clock now well no 708 they've got till 708 depending is anybody breathing harder breathing fast because it's a stressful situation you know and uh so they said that uh, that ran out and and uh, of course the left has been attacking the people aboard the uh aboard the submarine since it went down because the left is a hate group and it's an apocalyptic, suicidal death cult. It's like Jonestown gone global, uh, the left. And, uh, you know, they're the biggest murderers in the history of humankind. They've only had 100 years, okay, 106 years, and uh, they've murdered more people than any gang of brigands in uh, the history of humankind. But pay no attention to that. And they were... They were rubbing their claws together and going on Al Gore's amazing internet as usual. And a tag say, good, good billionaires, rich people, they should die. Racists. There's a Pakistani man and his uh, child in there. So they're racists and they're Islamophobes just by their own standards, using their own practices. Uh, you got to label them uh, that way because of that. And uh, the nice people, and there was a, you know, a, a scientist who had been down how many times? whole lot of times he had been down again and again and again. But the left was very happy that people were being killed because they hate and they're resentful and bitter. And of course, they're the army of losers, aren't they? So if you're very successful, then they hate you. Then they hate you because hate is their middle name. It's their bag baby, isn't it? Oh, speaking of which, there are multiple, well, there are two hit pieces today on the Supreme Court and uh, Samuel Alito, they're going after Samuel Alito now and uh, because they hate, they hate everybody. And, and they're racist because they've been going after Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas for uh, forever now. Uh, every other day there's another hit piece on Clarence Thomas. What it's all about is the Democrats want to anger the public with the Supreme Court. They already had that one would-be assassin show up outside of Brett Kavanaugh's house with a gun and extra magazines and kidnapping tools and burglary tools, and he was planning on murdering three Supreme Court justices. But that's not enough for them. You know, they angered that James Hodgkinson guy, too, and he went and shot Congressman Steve Scalise, but that's not on their permanent record because the media gets to expunge all of that for the Democrats. But a hit piece on the front page of the, it's the lead story in the Washington Post, uh, front page, upper right-hand corner, fresh scrutiny of high court. It's about hate. Senators plan to move on ethics bill. Really, the lizard king, Chuck Schumer, in the Senate is going to lecture us about ethics? Isn't he the one that stood in front of the Supreme Court and threatened members of the Supreme Court? You will reap the whirlwind. You will pay. And then after that, the would-be assassin showed up outside of Brett Kavanaugh's house. Didn't that happen? I want to tell you, Gorsuch. I want to tell you, Kavanaugh. You have released the whirlwind, and you will pay the price. Yeah, okay, and that's yeah, ethics. He's the guy who's going to um, uh, try to uh, uh, make the world a more ethical place. 
and uh, the senators to move on uh, with the Lizard King in charge. In column, Justice Samuel Alito in the Wall Street Journal wrote a uh, piece, defends his 2008 luxury trip. Uh, Let's talk about Chuck Schumer's luxury trips and Nancy Pelosi's luxury trips. Let's talk about Bill Clinton on Jeffrey Epstein's plane going to Jeffrey Epstein's island with the underage women who were bought for sex. Let's talk about human sex trafficking of underage girls and Bill Clinton. Let's ask Hillary Clinton about that. Let's do a front page story about that. Democracy died in darkness, people. Let's do that. And then if you go to the style section, the front page of the style section has another attack piece on the Supreme Court. And the reason, of course, is the Democrats want to anger. They want more would-be assassins, more mobs of people outside the homes of of just pro-American Supreme Court justices, sane, rational Supreme Court justices, not the radicals, the lunatics who don't know what a woman is, for example. Can you tell me what a woman is? What am I, some kind of biologist or something? Yeah. <laughs> no, but apparently you're a maroon, a, um, a moron. Just amazing. So we got that going for us. And, uh, you know, and the Democrats, uh, let's, let's uh, scrutinize. Uh, first of all, all of this has been cleared. And Samuel Alito um, has uh, explained the rules. And, and, you know, and, and by the way, this was a fishing trip that they're attacking him for. He went on a fishing trip with a friend, Justice Samuel Alito. He didn't go to uh, Mr. Didn't Hang Himself in His Jail Cell, Jeffrey Epstein's private sex island with the underage girls on what was the plane called? Lolita One, right? Uh, because Why would you call it Lolita One? Oh, because of the underage girls and the culture of underage girl sex. I think that might have something to do with it. Pretty amazing stuff. So they attack and they attack and they attack. Uh, and it's all a big lie. And it's because they want to pack the court. It's because they feel they lost control of the court when President Trump got three picks for the Supreme Court, right? And we still have Merrick Garland, who's all bitter about it because, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Uh, Bolshevik, Barack Obama, was going to pick that loser to be a Supreme Court justice for life. Thank God that didn't work out. Uh, that's one that Mitch McConnell gets points for, the turtle boy. Hey, turtle, good job on uh, keeping Merrick Garland, using Harry Reid's own rules against him. <clears throat> Great stuff. Democrats renew criticism of court's ethics code. How absurd. The Washington Post. What a joke. Now, let's uh, apply the same rules that they want to Im- impl- impose on this, uh, the Supreme Court. Let's apply those to the Senate and the House of Representatives and to the cabinet members that are these, these preening self-righteous frauds. Uh, let's get to that. So I want to, uh, I want to get to that. And uh, there are uh, a number of stories that are, that are kind of remarkable about the, uh, again, the attacks on the, on the people aboard the mini-sub who, uh, you know, apparently now all hope is lost. I don't think there was a great deal of hope even early on. But all hope is lost for the, uh, uh, you know, some miracle could happen, but it, it seems extremely improbable at this point. Uh, but there are some pretty amazing stories uh, out of there. And they're uh, attacking, for example, the owner of the submarine, uh, left-wing media, radical left-wing extremists and the radical extremist left-wing media attacking the, uh, the owner of the, uh, the sub and the company saying, oh my God, he, he donated money to GOP candidates. Dun, dun, dun. And that makes him a villain and you're supposed to be glad that he's dead now. Of course, he's a, presumably, of course, he's a billionaire. So I'm going to guess that he also gave money to Democrats. I'm going to have to. But they won't look at that because they're not journalists. They're propagandists peddling the big lie, just like Gurgle, as the Reverend Al would say. Um, also, um, attacking the media, attacking the media for not covering migrants that drowned off of Greece in the Mediterranean, but covering the billionaires aboard the mini submarine. You know, it's a kind of a different story, but that's all right. And uh, also, the CEO, the CEO on the sub, he didn't like to hire 50-year-old white guys. You got to hear this because they're not inspirational, not inspirational. I'll tell you what they are, though. That's coming up.
Hey, Chris here with some exciting news. Now you can listen to me live on the WMAL app. Doesn't matter if you're in your car, in the office, on the go. The WMAL app delivers crystal clear around-the-clock news coverage anywhere with cell service or Wi-Fi. So don't miss a second of your favorite shows. Download the WMAL app today on the Apple App Store or at Google Play Store. Well, happy Thursday once again. Let's uh, a great many stories to get to. <clears throat> and uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk may face off in a cage match fight. You think I'm making this up? I don't have to make things up. They, they feed me a steady supply of crazy all day long. All I do is collect it. Uh, all right, let's go to the telephones. Let's go to Victor calling from Silver Spring, Maryland. Victor, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris. Uh, you're going to be talking about the submarine and the wolk does kill right there. I got two questions. Number one, why should we pay for the search and rescue? Um, up in New Hampshire, I got a friend up there. He says if you do something stupid like getting lost on a hike or something, mm -hmm. and they have to come and rescue you, you've got to pay for that, for them rescuing you. So, you know, why do we have to pay for, for the stupidity of this uh, so-called adventure? Number two, <laughs> AOC, if you're listening, just think, all the carbon dioxide that's being spewed into the air looking for the sub. <laughs> what do you think of that, AOC? Well, I, I, you know, I suspect that, first of all, I don't think they're going to be found and rescued. Um, but uh, if they were, we should charge them, right? Well, we can charge the estate. Um, uh, honestly, maybe there should have even been an agreement of some kind uh, before. But let me say, Victor, this is the kind of thing we do. This is what, um, you know, advanced societies do. They, uh, if it was, well, let me ask you this. What if it was a group of school children in a school bus that was trapped two miles beneath the uh, surface of the Atlantic Ocean? Would we go get them? Yes. <laughs> of course, they'd presumably be innocent and didn't volunteer to dive two miles down beneath the surface of the ocean in a school what bus. What I don't understand is um, you, um, you probably know that uh, safety features were not included, like a beacon. Also, um, I was talking to one of my trucker friends who was a, uh, in, on a submarine in the Navy, mm -hmm. and he says that um, when you go down to a certain uh, height, uh, depth, um, right. it's going to implode like a balloon, like a tin can. Yeah, well, a uh, uh, you know, that's uh, that's happily. I mean, you know, thousands of pounds of pressure per square inch when you're two miles down. Uh, it's a very high pressure situation. Presumably, the uh, the submarine had been down there again and again, so they thought it would survive this. I, uh, this is a, a pretty crazy story, and. Uh, Victor, I, I understand your your thing, and you're right. Now, if you do recklessly get lost in the woods in a lot of different places, you you get a bill when they come to rescue you. And and honestly, if these people uh, had been rescued, which is uh, not really expected at this point, I suspect that they would get a bill uh, too. I and you know, if I were president of the United States, king of the world, I would I would send them a bill. Um, and you know, they might even get stuck with a bill. Even though they'll never be found, they may never be found. This uh, craft may never be recovered. Uh, but certainly when you go down that deep, you know, the, the, uh, the story is that there have been more people in space than there have been down this deep in the ocean. It's uh, the kind of the joke on the Internet is that they really got the full Titanic experience, didn't they? Went down two miles. Everybody died. The the ship will uh, remain down there forever, and you know they'll become a tourist attraction uh, maybe uh, later on because they'll be hard to pull up. Be real heavy, heavy down there. Now it is a it's a crazy world out there, and the left, of course, is uh, attacking everybody because they hate everybody and they attack everybody, and and they're insane, criminally, often violently insane. 
It's very, very common. Uh, and there is a uh, there are so many crazy stories associated with just this one alone. But but let's go to uh, let's go to, to Snopes. You know, Elon Musk owns SpaceX, a space based communication system. He is uh, the Howard Hughes of our time, and uh, it's called Starlink. Or you know, Starlink is a subsidiary of SpaceX, his space his private space program, Starlink, um, which Elon Musk runs, and and uh, they. The uh, crazy people put out their Ocean Gate, which is the submarine company, right, owned by the rich guy who they're attacking now as a Republican donor. He um, uh, he's down there, and he is presumably not coming back. It is a an extraordinary uh, situation. His name is Stockton Rush. Stockton Rush is the owner-founder of the uh, company, the submarine company, Ocean Gate, and he is down there aboard this craft, and, and his fate will be the same as the fate of the others, although he may have been the first to die because the other people aboard the submarine might have murdered him when they got trapped down there. Just a hypothesis, I can't say for sure, but I have seen those Twilight Zone episodes where, where things like this happen. So uh, Ocean Gate, the company behind the submersible that went missing, um, on the Titanic wreckage, wreckage exploration, relied on Elon Musk's Starlink satellites to provide communications during the expedition. See, that's the, the thing that is uh, put out there on the Internet. Say, wait a minute, they could communicate uh, from the bottom of the ocean thanks to Elon Musk and his Starlink satellite communication system? Well, the people at Snopes, you know, the left wing, this is another left wing front group, Snopes, and they lie all the time and they get things wrong all the time, even when they're not lying. Uh, And I've been fact checking them for years. But uh, here it is. So that was circulating on the Internet that OceanGate used Starlink uh, satellites to provide communications during the expedition. And and the people at uh, Snopes, they fact checked that and they said, that's true. That's true. Then they provided context. Starlink is a subsidiary of SpaceX, which Elon Musk owns. However, we do not know how much Starlink is responsible for the loss of contact with the submersible. Not how much, they just he's at least partially responsible, Elon Musk and his system. Nor the reason behind that loss of contact. See, that's uh, Snopes. And they, but they said true. They marked it true with a big green check mark and the big word true next to it. That's true. And then uh, a short time later, they came back uh, with the same question that uh, OceanGate used uh, Starlink uh, for communications. And then they came back and they modified their first rating of true. Now it's unproven. It went to unproven. Starlink is a subsidiary of SpaceX, which Elon Musk runs. Uh, OceanGate indeed said it was relying on the company for uh, the uh, exhibition, which included the submersible and uh, mothership. That is a vessel that stays above the water to navigate and communicate uh, with land during the exhibition. Um, It's unknown if or to what extent Starlink was used by the submersible itself. See, they just changed their thing because they they changed it. First it was true, now it's unproven. And they say, or whether it was only used by the mothership. They don't know anything. What do they know? They're just fact checkers at uh, uh, Snopes. Then uh, that said, we, we do not know how much Starlink is responsible for the loss of contact with the submersible, nor the reasons behind that loss of contact. All right, and then they came back, uh, Snopes came back a third time, and they uh, once again rating the same claim on the same Internet. And now it's false. Then it came back as false. So first it was true, right? First it was true, according to Snopes. Then it was unproven. Then it was false. So you should always believe Snopes just as much as uh, you believed them the first time here because they're not truth tellers. And then, uh, once again, when they rate it false, uh, they uh, Starlink subsidiary of SpaceX owned by Elon Musk. OceanGate is indeed relying on the company for expedition. And uh, However, scientists have pointed out that the submersible would not have had an acoustic link with the surface and, uh, you see, uh, could not have relied on satellite Internet to communicate with the surface. So it was false all along. But first it was true. 
according to Snopes, because they don't care. They're not smart. They lie. They're lefties. Then it was unproven, and uh, then it was false. It will remain false because it was false all along. You can't communicate with a satellite link from two miles beneath the ocean, even you know a couple hundred feet beneath the ocean. I um, was honored to spend several days on a U.S. Navy Los Angeles class fast attack submarine, the USS Montpelier, and uh, I learned some things about the way that they communicate and um, having to go close to the surface and put up antenna, and uh, there are various ways of communicating. But uh, they, you know, know. That's, uh, so that was a big lie. That was all a big lie uh, by Snopes and those lunatics. But there is more. Wait, there is more Elon Musk because he can't help but be in the news. And the left hates him. <clears throat> they just hate him very, very much. Now, the, uh, the people at Snopes... They're uh, going on and on, and they, they've got all these things. Penetration depth of 2.45 gigahertz in water uh, at uh, 8 centimeters and falls off with increasing frequency. Now, they started getting to the science. No, you can't do that. And uh, they were wrong, and they're idiots all along. Uh, just saying. Don't believe Snopes or anything they say. Now, here's the uh, headline in Variety Magazine. Variety Magazine. It is Elon Musk again. Mark Zuckerberg. You know him, he's the crook that helped throw the um, 2020 presidential election after coercion by the corrupt FBI, right? And uh, and he's uh, kind of a mealy-mouthed, uh, wormy guy, don't you think? Is uh, You know, he doesn't look like he could hit a baseball, does he? No. With a bat, that is. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Variety Magazine. Mark Zuckerberg wants to fight Elon Musk in a cage match. Quote, send me location. This is uh, this would be fun. Uh, this should be on the you know the wide wide world of sports. Sir. <laughs> In totally normal news, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg and Twitter owner Elon Musk might be duking it out in a high profile fight. It all started with an Elon Musk response on June twentieth on a Twitter thread mocking Mark Zuckerberg, which stated, "I'm much I'm up for a cage match if he is." LOL, right? The uh, crack was in response to a user saying Mark Zuckerberg does the jujitsu now. He does the jujitsu now. Not jujitsu, just the jujitsu. A reference to his recent meddling in a Brazilian jujitsu tournament, right? So Elon Musk uh, throws in, I'm up for a cage match if he is LOL. And on Wednesday evening, Mark Zuckerberg responded, that's last night, on his own platform, Instagram, they all own their own social media platforms. You know, I think they should uh, live stream the the beaten by posting a story which included a screenshot of the tweet and responded, "Send me location." It's kind of a caveman sentence, isn't it? Wait a minute, send me the location or something. Like that. Variety reached out to Meta about Zuckerberg's message, and a spokesperson confirmed that the story speaks for itself. Meanwhile, Elon Musk isn't flinching, responding, Vegas Octagon. I want to see this. Las Vegas, the Octagon. Seemingly a little mixed martial arts uh, thing. Seemingly in response to Mark Zuckerberg's location request. They, they, they figured that out in no time at all, didn't they? That's uh, pretty smart, smart people. I have this great move that I call the walrus, he, sa- <laughs> he says, where I just lie on top of my opponent and do nothing. Musk tweeted. <laughs> That's a, kind of an overweight uh, joke. And uh, man, oh man. So that is uh, that could be fun. Now, on May 6th, Mark Zuckerberg took to Instagram, which he owns, with pictures from his uh, fight day writing, completed my first jujitsu tournament, and won some medals. Yeah, I bet nobody was paid off for anything. <laughs> for the gorilla jujitsu team. He, uh, and he was dressed in a gorilla suit, which is kind of weird. You know, that was, uh, that was uh, strange. I no, thought. I wish you were in high school. I could take him behind the gym. That's what I wish. We should have a Trump-Biden uh, cage match in the Octagon in Las Vegas, too. Trump would beat the, I mean, come on. My grandmother would beat up uh, Joe Biden. You just tell him to run over here and he'd fall down. Just uh, <laughs> back to your neutral corner and he'd fall down. Uh, somebody throw him a banana. Man. Just, uh, just amazing. So I think that'd be fun. That'd be, a, that'd be a good time, wouldn't it? Um, all right. Now let's get to, uh, let's get to more stuff because uh, we actually have audio, right? Uh, am I right? Of the, uh, <clears throat> the, the owner 
of the company in question that owns the submarine, Stockton Rush. He's the founder and CEO of the uh, the vessel's U.S.-based operating company called Ocean Gate. And, um, and he is aboard the submarine, uh, uh, according to all the reports. We can't confirm that from here, but uh, that's, uh, that's according to all the reports. And there are some wacky stories out there. They're attacking him. The left hates everybody, and they certainly hate successful people, and they want to destroy successful people. Oh, speaking of which, you see Colin Kaepernick. What a moron this guy is. He came out against capitalism yesterday because he's a mainstream Democrat, and that's where the party is. So here is the, uh, this audio of uh, Stockton Rush. Stockton Rush. And there are news stories on this as well. USAA News, but not the Washington Post, has a story. Lost Subs CEO didn't want to hire, quote, 50-year-old white guys, end quote, like other su- submarine companies did because they, quote, are not inspirational. Now, this is the Ocean Gate CEO, Stockton Rush, and he said this on camera, I guess. Fine. There are other sub operators out there, but they, they typically um, have uh, gentlemen who are ex-military submariners and they you'll see a whole bunch of 50 year old white guys. Um, I wanted our team to be younger, to be inspirational. And I'm not going to inspire a 16 year old to, to go pursue marine technology. But a 25-year-old, uh, you know, who's a subpilot or uh, a platform operator, one of our techs, can be inspirational. And so we've really tried to to get um, very intelligent, motivated, younger individuals involved because we're doing things that are completely new. We're taking approaches that are used largely in the aerospace industry. I uh, boy, largely in the aerospace, and you know, I um, gosh, well, uh, good call, good call, Stockton Rush. Uh, first of all, in America, we refer to people that are on submarines as submariners and not submariners. The British call submariners submariners, but we call them submariners. And and let me say this, there is a, a great old um, axiom that uh, perhaps he should have abided by. For want of a nail, a shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, a horse was lost. For want of a horse, a rider was lost. For want of a rider, the message was lost. And in the end, of course, you know, for want of the message, the battle was lost. For want of the battle, the kingdom was lost. And all for want of a horseshoe nail. You see? Now, uh, that's the thing. Now, you don't want any 50-year-old white guys. You know what 50-year-old white guys are pretty good at? The checklist. The safety checklist. Hey, wait a minute. Um, Maybe we should have batteries for that... uh, what do they? They have like a little uh, Xbox control in the uh, thing and a keyboard that they got at uh, Walmart or something controlling this. And and uh, but they've got a 25 year old who was inspirational instead. Um, you know, maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe next time a 50 year old white guy. Just saying. But that's it. Doesn't want any. Doesn't want any of those 50 year old white guys. He wants. Uh, someone who is inspirational. They typically um, have uh, gentlemen who are ex-military submariners, and they you'll see a whole bunch of 50-year-old white guys. Um, I wanted our team to be younger, to be inspirational. Yeah, that's <clears throat> okay. Well, you know, youth has its place. Um, and then, uh, you know, life is full of little trade-offs. There was a... A trade-off made there, but at this point, it looks like it isn't going to turn out very well. At least people were inspired to stay away from mini-subs and stop trying to go down to visit the Titanic. I think that will be the inspiration here. Pretty uh, pretty amazing stuff. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. But... The media is angry because the Ocean Gate CEO missing aboard the Titanic sub had a history of donating to GOP candidates. You don't even want to read the comments posted after that story. Uh, it turns out that uh, Stockton Rush also donated money to at least one Democrat by the name of Rick Larson, 
in the House of Representatives out of Washington, the state of Washington. But uh, you get your left-wing media attacking him and uh, vilifying him. They, they, they believe this is a, enough to demonize him in the eyes of Democrats because it is that he donated money to Republicans. They say he leans Republican. He's not a big donor. He's not a mega donor. But he has given money to Republicans. And then, the, well, the last couple of donations that he gave were to a Democrat by the name of Rick Larson in the House of Representatives out of uh, the Seattle area in Washington. But uh, it's all about the demonization. Everybody's got to be a villain. It's our media. Filthy, dirty, rotten media. Okay, let's go to the uh, telephones. Let's go to Phil calling from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Phil, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Oh, Mr. Plant, this Stockton Rush guy is quite a character. I don't care about his politics. His approach was, he said this, he actually made this phrase, he said, safety is relative. And uh, at, there is a worldwide organization of professional submariners who all sent letters to him and to anyone they could listen would listen that said that this is dangerous, this needs to be researched and checked out. And Stockton Rush refused to have his vessel uh, certified. As a matter of fact, it was a carbon fiber tube with two steel end caps glued on it and the one of the end caps was certified for 1300 feet not uh you know uh 13 uh for like a third of the way down and the manufacturer said we only we only certify this for a third of the way down plus the only way you got in this thing was it had 18 bolts on an end cap and they would take those bolts off put you in this thing and then bolt you in with only 17 of the bolts and there was no way you could escape and every time you've heard a story of somebody else going down in the ocean, you've heard of them going into, into a, a Russian sub that was built like a tank or an American sub that was built like a tank. These people signed on to madness. And yeah. now this sub is gone. Yeah, it sure looks that way. I, uh, I tell you, the mini sub I took in January to the bottom of the Antarctic Ocean uh, is looking better and better. I went back and looked at the video. Looks fine. 